Hello and welcome, this is Melskunner, and we're back with some more MechWarrior 3. Since the last video, I've had some time to reflect on my setup for this mission, and I am not too happy with the loadout of the mechs, which really, it's a compromise with what equipment we have available. In both mechs, I only have 12 heat sinks that I can use maximum, and that is a real limiting factor. And one thing I will point out from what I'm gathering from this game is the equipment doesn't really count as being installed until you actually get into the mission. So although I have loaded out the bushwhacker with certain equipment, I still have that equipment to use with the strider. So I can get to the same total level of heat sinks in this mech as I could with the bushwhacker, even though technically I've installed those heat sinks in the bushwhacker as well. With that being said, I do have a lot of weapons to choose from. I could put in seven medium lasers, but those heat sinks are the ultimate terminator of what I can do effectively. Even with what weapons we've seen with the Bushwhacker, which really are not that heat generating, we heat up pretty fast. So it's a huge limiting factor. And I've tried to do my best here. And another thing that we have as a compromise is what ammunition I have. So I did have that Clan LRM-10, which seemed to be pretty effective, but I don't have much LRM-10 ammo. I only have 200 uh, rounds at this current moment. So if I were to set up the mech with a couple tons worth of ammo, well, it's 120 shots per ton. So I can't actually have those two tons uh, worth of that ammo store uh, full at this moment, which is the problem we were having with the Bushwhacker. Now, one thing I did notice, though, is I have a lot of machine gun ammo. LRM5 ammo, which is the other thing that I have kind of turned to, Really, I have more of that than I have the other M10 ammo, but it's still going to be the same problem. Eventually, I will run out if I continue to use it. So, I have to figure out something else that I can do. We have a lot of ballistic weapon ammo, AC-10, AC-2, but those are heavy uh, pieces of equipment. And although I can fit that on the Bushwhacker, no problem, it's going to be a lot harder to fit a weapon system like that and have this be an effective mech with what weight we have. So... Really, I think the machine guns are going to be where we have to turn. And I do have a fair number of those. And I have clan machine guns as well, which are fairly light. I have five of those. So I could fit in with no problem if I were to remove the Beagle Active Probe. I could fit in a couple machine guns. Uh, now, if I am understanding this correctly, this should total up because it's rounding up to uh, half a ton if I put in two of these. So one and we can see that is indeed the case so we have one ton that we could put in the ammo for example so if i were to come over to the right torso and maybe we have too much stuff in this right torso as is so i'm going to move the pulse laser i think over to the left torso and we will put the uh, ammo in that right torso section so we want uh, machine gun ammo And uh, that's going to be for the machine gun ammo. That's 200 rounds per ton. So we have another 6,000 plus, 6,500 plus uh, ammo for the machine gun. So that's going to be a little bit more of something that we can sustain from battle to battle. It also gives us more firepower at this current moment uh, to run with something like that. As a matter of fact, it looks like even after putting in two machine guns... Oh yeah, that's right, because I removed the pulse laser. Okay, so if we come back over here, we add back in that pulse laser. So at this point, I have added in more firepower, a couple of machine guns, and it's something we can sustain a little bit better. So that makes me feel a little bit better about our loadout. So let's go ahead and go into the weapon grouping. The machine guns definitely should be their own weapon group, in my opinion. I almost wonder, did I forget to do the weapon groups before? Because I feel like this... Yeah, being in its own weapon group uh, down in three was not the way I would have set it up. But there we go. That's not too bad. And we can transition from the pulse laser to the machine guns when we're in close. And this is going to be a mech that's more about in close firepower. Now, I could increase this firepower even more. Or I could give it more sustain by removing the jump jets I installed. But for now, we're going to try things out as is this gives me a little bit of mobility to play around with so we have a river to cross or a hill to get up on i don't have to worry about trying to circumvent where i could get to uh 
you know, up on that hill or where I could get across that river. Maybe a bridge is required. Now I can just jump over it. So maybe that will help me get in close as I may need to do. All right, so I'm going to try this loadout. This is a lighter mech. It's not as heavily armored. Maybe this isn't the best choice because I think this is the last mission of this per a particular operation, but we'll find out. So let's go ahead and launch. Reactor online. Sensors online. Weapons online. All systems nominal. All right, so I'm going to switch to dual firing. And as we can see, we're quite fast. You know, I'm not getting the torso twist when I was in that third person perspective, so. Okay, we've got a lighter mech here. I'm gonna dodge that. Switch the machine guns. Oh, he shut down? That's funny. Ammo oh, we're already out of machine gun ammo. So that right there is the problem with machine gun ammo. It does not last long. And I kind of already knew that. But hey, it gave us that little bit of firepower. And now we're overheating. Okay, we've got another mech incoming. Let's worry about this first. Oh, we knocked him down. All right, let's get out of here. Okay, we killed him. We don't have to worry about him. Let's cross here. Just giving myself a little bit of opportunity to cool off. I think we already did some good damage here. Let's switch to the LRM-5s. We can kind of play with this guy at range. Doesn't seem like he has very good long-range weaponry. Let's cross the river again. I think we have an ally coming in now. It looks like we've really jacked up his legs. We should probably stay on those legs. I got him. Alright, what are we what are our objectives? I haven't really even looked at it. Okay, we're supposed to destroy enemy structures, which I believe is what's going on right now. My ally is doing that. So what we're gonna to want to do is we're going to set up our mobile. The old base. So we have to destroy power station, other various things. Oh, we got missiles coming our way. Let's try and dodge that crap. I think I just ran into my ally. Okay. Targeting. Ah, uh, we've got mechs incoming. Try and mess them up. Okay, let's flush some coolant. Where's our range? Alright, we should be in range to fire these. Oh, that's probably too close. Got him. 
Okay, we got one more mech in the area. I would very much like to get in here and rearm, though, and repair. And I think these guys are ready for me. Oh, that's unfortunate. Might be able to get away with it. Yeah, it looks like I... Alright, so as I had feared, machine guns really don't last that long. But we did get our LRMs back. So we need to have more ammo than I currently have. We have... Okay, let's switch to the machine guns when we get in range. I'm actually getting beat up here because I am allowing myself to be hit by the turrets, which was a mistake. I kind of forgot about them. Let's just get behind these buildings and get out of the uh, line of fire. As a matter of fact, those turrets are probably a bigger threat than the... Oh, come on! Some um, AI. Okay. I think we just missed. Yeah, that should be enough to take that out. Yeah, see, already out of ammo. So, like, one ton of ammo just doesn't last any amount of time at all. Very frustrating. Overheating. Might be far enough away. Okay. So, let's see if we can command our allies. So first I'm going to do... Um, no, I prefer that location again. Let's see if we can uh, get our... Yeah, he's following me, so I'm betting I can get him repaired as well. Oh. Alright, there we go. So we'll try and get him repaired as well. After I'm done with mine. So yeah, if I do these machine guns in the future, I have to add a lot more ammo. Even another ton wouldn't last long. Okay. Let's, uh, have them set up again. Okay. And then... We will say for him... This is the command interface that you can use. Um, repair. Going in for a refit. Okay. And then we should be good to go. So any damage he sustained, he'll be alright. Okay, um... So he's not able to do it like I was because of that crap, so... Um, let... Okay, disengaging. Waiting for rendezvous coordinates. Let's have him do this area. Transferring now. Then we're gonna... Um, bring up that interface again. We'll just tell him to follow me for now. He's not doing what we need him to do. Oh, sorry, we're in the way. Alright, so while we wait, we're supposed to be blowing stuff up. Um, as a matter of fact, we've got enemy contacts. Oh, we've got an Orion incoming. We definitely need to take care of that. Arc a little. Oh, I don't think those had the lock on. We have arrived and are ready to deploy. Okay, now we'll tell them to repair. Yes, sir. Refitting mech. Alright, what are the, our other... There we go. Get rid of these guys. Try and arc it so that it doesn't hit the bridge, but there it goes. Okay, now we just have the Orion. So again, we'll go into the command thing. We'll tell him to uh, follow me. So I'm going to have to get used to that command stuff, but we'll get it eventually. 
Now, I have no idea if I'm hitting this guy or not. Uh, for now, I'm not going to worry about it. Let's have the uh, mobile field base come over here just so they're out of the way, so their Ryan doesn't mess them up. Okay, so we have uh, structures. So this is start. All right, so these are the structures. I didn't. I, I was looking there. I thought I had got them. At least I assume so. Let, actually, no. It's over here. My ally, I think, has already been blowing some of this stuff up. Where are you attacking? Ah, over here. These things. Alright, we'll continue to hit those. I'm kind of guessing on what he was attacking, but I think I'm right. We have arrived and are ready to deploy. Yeah, I can't lock it on him. There we go. Okay, next waypoint. We have power station at Baker. Which see if we can lock on. Okay. Something around about here. I'm trying to conserve my ammo, so I'm just gonna use the pulse lasers. Okay. Destroy laser towers at Charlie. Okay, Charlie is linked up. Alright, let's go. And this mech didn't do too bad. Okay, he fired some missiles at me. Let's see what... Ah, I was a little late on that. Well, he hit me pretty hard there. Alright. So I have to be ready to dodge his missiles in case that happens again. Yeah, see, I just dodged his missile. Problem is, I might not get the best firing solution. I'm constantly dodging. We'll play a little bit of a missile game here. Yeah, see, I'm not hitting him at all. He hit me pretty hard there. But I think it's, you know, better safe than sorry. We are going to repair here. I've also burned through some of my ammo. These guys should be set up here. All right, we may just have to get in close and personal. I would really prefer not to have to do that to an Orion, but... It's actually somewhat surprising we are facing such a heavy mech at this stage. Okay, well, let's go, uh... Go get him. Right, we definitely want our allies... Detected. ...ally to help us. We keep going fast, though. These missiles will miss. So... Problem is, it's going to be difficult to get a lock on. I'm moving, and I'm also going to miss a lot. Missile launch detected. Okay, dodge it. <laughs> He's done a good job of destroying the base for me. Okay, let's switch to our close range weapons. Oh no, that's not good. Uah! I'm running into buildings and things. Ah! He's gonna be able to smack me with his LRMs if I don't get moving here. Alright. Come on, ally. Get in there and help me out. Okay. I would say one of the big weaknesses I've kind of noticed from this game is its AI. Maybe not the best. Okay, so my ally should be engaging now. We'll come in. Ugh. Come on. Here. Almost out of machine gun ammo. Okay, we're doing some damage to him. He's gonna have a lot of armor, so... Oop, we don't want to stop, ever. Ever stop. Look 
Okay. He's gonna have a hard time hitting me at this range with his missiles. As a matter of fact, his missiles won't. His missiles won't do anything at this distance unless they're SRMs, which they may be. We can dodge him. Okay, there goes an arm. Let's flush him coolant so we can keep firing here. All right, got him. All right, destroy laser towers op Charlie. I'm gonna guess these are the laser towers, yep. Definitely took some decent damage in that fight, but that wasn't too bad. We kept moving. We're able to dodge a lot of his missiles. Oh, this was the, uh... <laughs> he shut down. This is the factory here, I guess. Okay, there we go. So we salvaged a shadow cat. Amongst some other couple things. I missed the impressive explosion behind me. Bummer. Uh, I missed some of the other things that we got there. I'm curious if we got the Orion. Let's see. Before we move out, you'll have to decide on salvage. Meanwhile, we've intercepted a private channel between Star Colonel Ratash Osis and his aide. Stand by for playback. Smashed, Dre. The entire facility. Without those greenhouses, we'll be hard-pressed to feed the incoming forces. You warned him about placing the site so near our hydroponics project. Ath, I did. But will Brendan Corbett take the blame for this? Nag, Star Colonel. With Lincoln Osis' death on Strana Mecti, the Galaxy Commander will be our next con. He can do no wrong. Exactly. I will make these Surats pay for this. I promise. You catch that, Lance Leader? Lincoln Osis, Ilkhan of the clans, died on Stranamecti. The Star League must be victorious. But I don't expect we'll be relieved anytime soon. All right. Let's see what other salvage we got. So I'm very excited with this in particular. This will make our bushwhacker a lot better. I think this is a lot easier to use than the standard autocannon, but it's also lighter, so it'll give us more potential to do other things. Uh, of course, I really want to get some heat sinks. So hopefully that's something we get. We get an LRM-20, ammunition, LRM-5, machine gun. We got a little bit of that, so we'll recover some of the ammo we spent, but we definitely spent quite a bit. Unfortunately, we only got 10 rounds for that uh, LB-10X, so that doesn't sound like it's going to be all that useful for a while. SRM-4, again, ammo not a lot. LRM-20, okay, that's going to be about a little over three tons worth of ammo. But not much more beyond that. Um, did I get a gauze rifle? What did I see? Maybe I already had one. Well, I'm not positive of that. Jump jets, armor, jump jets. Oh, heat sinks. Uh, no more heat sinks. Well, you know what, though? We did get a Blackhawk. Blackhawk is a clan mech. It should have clan heat sinks. That, we might have to go with that. I'm not a big fan of the Blackhawk. And you'll see why when we use it. But, oh, you know what? The Shadow Cat is also a... Okay, so that's the one we're probably going to use. The Blackhawk is uh, problematic. Let's just go on to the next mission here. The second operations area. Electric dam and drained the lake before we lost all contact with them. A support operative from Team 2 discovered a previously unknown underground site here. That facility exits here. The original destination and entrance to an underground facility is located here. Our job is to get to the first underground facility via the lake bed. Investigate and neutralize the underground area here. Liquidate distribution and support facilities in this area and destroy the real mech factory, which we now believe is located underground in this area. Bring up the probe data for Op 2. The probe flight doesn't cover our current position, but it does catch the far end of the lake. Freeze video. We need to reach this island where a large elevator provides access to the underground facility. Begin. 
The flyby doesn't give us any more information. The lake is completely drained now that the dam has been destroyed. Kill the video feed. These are your objectives. These turrets protect the objective at Able. They must be eliminated before the mobile field bases can move into the lake area. The approaches to Baker are protected by these fixed emplacements. There's no way to determine what forces might remain in the area, but Team 2 was hit hard. Maybe they took a lot of the clanners with them. Good luck. Okay, so from what I gathered of that briefing, this used to be a lake full of water, but they blew up a dam which drained the lake. So this should now be ground that we can move on. We have to get to this platform here that is suspended on a bridge. So this would normally be how you would have gotten to it if the lake had been there. And uh, there's an elevator that goes to an underground base, and that's a future mission in this operation. So it sounds like we have to come down this path, perhaps. Maybe this is some kind of canal path. And uh, bust through here, and then go through the rest of these defenses. All right, well, let's go ahead and take a look at the mech lab, now that we have a lot more stuff to play around with. You know what I'm going to do? Uh, let's go ahead and go to the salvage. So there's a limit of how much stuff I can have, if I remember correctly. So current tonnage, and then allocated tonnage. So, like, if I didn't like the strider, for example, um, what I could do, I could probably get rid of it, I'm guessing. Yeah, I can get rid of things I don't like or are not helpful to me. At this stage, we're not, I think, at a point where we're going to run out of storage, but uh, mechs are going to be fairly heavy. So uh, if we do this... Oh, okay, maybe it's already factored all this weight in. It hasn't factored in the weight for... Or maybe it doesn't total the uh, weight for your mechs. Okay, well, when we start to get to a point where we're beyond, or getting close to beyond this 900 tons, uh, I'll start having to think about what I would want to jettison, like what's not helping us very much. But from what I'm gathering, with the equipment that we have, we definitely need to use one of the clan mechs, because we only have clan heat sinks. We don't have standard heat sinks outside of those, just those two, which isn't enough. I mean, we've seen that. I, we've been overheating pretty consistently. So let's go to the mech lab and play around with this. So we have uh, the uh, Strider, which we have set up. Uh, outside of that, we have a slightly heavier Shadow Cat, and then a slightly heavier beyond that, Black Hawk. Now, the Black Hawk, I'm not too big of a fan on. And I was just about to say why, uh, but then I wanted to let you guys hear the briefing. So, one of the big problems with the Blackhawk, and this is also true of the Owens, but the Owens I don't think is as bad, is you don't have a torso to it. So if we look at the Blackhawk here, uh, if you see the way the legs are connected, you really can't torso to it. So you can only kind of shimmy this mech to the left or the right a little bit, which in my opinion really limits the effectiveness of mechs. Uh, Owens is the same kind of situation, if we switch over to that. Um, sure, wasn't really playing with that anyway. Um, so, the Owens is the same kind of situation, where the legs are attached in a certain way, where it's kind of hard to do a torso twist. The Shadow Cat, on the other hand, and the two clan mechs are the Shadow Cat and the Black Hawk. The Shadow Cat has a traditional torso twist, and it has your traditional uh, arm movement. So this is going to be a little bit more easy to use mech. It's also going to be slightly uh, heavier than the Strider, so I think this is a good one to uh, play with as far as what we can do with it. Now, all of the uh, setups here uh, we can't do because we don't apparently have the equipment, but we can customize this thing and maybe come out uh, with a decent mech. So that's what we're going to try. I think at this stage... With what heat sinks we have, it's the really the only choice I have because uh, I'm gonna guess here. It lets me put standard heat sinks on. Does it let me put clan heat sinks on? It does. That's so weird. I mean, because these are single heat sinks. I mean, they look like single heat sinks. Maybe in this game they're more efficient, but I don't know that because it's not listed anywhere. I don't think there's anywhere in the manual where it tells you how much uh, how much heat uh, the different heat sinks sink. So I really don't know. Uh, now, a double heat sink, that's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, and I can use those if I want to. Let's take a look real quick, though, 
what is your current loadout? So you've got 10 heat sinks, and I'm guessing those are just standard heat sinks. What about the Blackhawk? Uh, again, I'm not really saving anything. So this thing already starts with a bunch of double heat sinks. So we will benefit uh, to a certain extent uh, by using this mech as opposed to the Shadow Cat, which is using single heat sinks. So heat efficiency wise, the Blackhawk's not bad. Very tempting to use the Blackhawk over the Shadow Cat just from that standpoint. But again, uh, usability is not as good. Shadow Cat. I'm sorry, the Blackhawk. Okay. Well, again, it's going to say, are you sure you didn't save this? Yeah, I'm sure. Now, if I use a different loadout, does that change? Okay. So going to alternate A switches it to 13 double heatsink. So now if I come into customize, I go into equipment. I don't think it actually took any of the heat sinks that we had. Well, I could be wrong. I want to confirm this. I mean, I have five right here. So, I mean, 13 double heat sinks is going to be a heck of a lot better than 10 normal ones. So, yeah, all right, let's play with this. Then. So we've got 27 and a half tons to play with. What kind of weapons do we have? So I don't have a Gauss rifle, so that ammo is not really going to help me at this stage. Um, we do have the, uh, I don't believe we got any LRM-10 ammunition. No, so I'm really going to have to keep an eye on this here with where we are at ammunition wise and decide what we can afford like for example i can't really do this so this i have 10 shots that's probably one ton of ammo that's not really good sustain i wouldn't be able to reload it because i don't have any backup ammo a standard ac10 i could manage but there are problems with that um the lb2x might be all right but i don't know how many tons of ammo that is maybe 50 per ton not positive. I would have to look at the stats with that one. So yeah, I have to make some decisions on what kind of weapons I want to use based off of how much ammo I have, which is, you know, not a lot. All right, well, let's take a look at the weaponry. Again, machine guns we would benefit from. Doesn't heat us up. And we have a lot of ammo for that. So that's a big uh, reason why I may want to do that. So, got a double heat sink in the right arm and the left arm. Um, okay. We've got endosteel structure. Let's see what kind of armor we have. So no surprise here, we have clan armor, but we only have seven tons. We may be able to actually get better off if I were to use uh, inner sphere armor. Wouldn't be as effective. Clan armor would be better, but all right. So we have seven reserve for the end of steel, seven reserve. Ooh, so is that how clan armor is better? Because normally this would be fourteen and fourteen. Let's just confirm that. Oh, it doesn't let me remove this armor thing. That's not a lot of armor. I mean, we had uh, seven and a half tons. On the strider maybe that's just like our limit of what we have huh interesting so we don't get but let's just see seven tons is it the same it isn't seven and a half tons is the okay so this is one of those situations where um, the clan mechs are definitely better, but it's kind of hard to upgrade them beyond their standard. So we're just going to hit OK. So with this one, you have 18 double heat sinks. What can we do if we customize it uh, as far as armor? So this starts with 10 tons of standard armor, but... I have to keep in mind that we didn't actually do one of these loadouts. So now what is it going to say? Oh, 10 tons of standard. That's weird. Um, let's say we do alternate A. So it did install some of the things we have. We have 14 double heat sinks. 
Built 10 tons of standard. Weird. Okay. So if we go over to the Shadow Cat. We hit alternate A. Give us some double heat. Does it give us that clan armor? It does. So I don't actually have clan armor in my store, so I'm not really sure how I'm getting this armor. But I will point out that we only get 134 points with this, which is not that great. So I definitely could improve this mech. I just don't have the clan armor to add in more. So I have to make up my mind on do I just go with what I have and try and improve. So in this case, honestly, we probably would be better off going with the Blackhawk because I could do uh, more easily and upgrade. So if we come into the, I, I mean, I, as much as I don't like the Blackhawk for various reasons, I think it's something we can prove a little bit easier. So I'm going to go ahead and go into the armor here. We're going to remove, so it looks like we can stick 10 tons of armor on here. Um, this does not use endosteel. It only takes 7, but this is going to take 14. So we only have seven criticals available if I do it this way. So the question is, with that loadout, ah, interesting. So we save ourselves a ton by the cost of 14 critical slots. So can I do something compelling with seven criticals? See, this is where you really need the clan tech. Um... Oops, that yeah, weapon. Um, some of these may be being taken up by the double heat sinks, though. So if we decide we don't want that, go into equipment here. So all of our uh, double heat sinks are being used right now. Let's say we remove one. Yeah, so that would give us criticals back. All right. So at this moment, 18 double heat sinks is probably overkill. So I am going to put this double heat sink back on the left torso, but I am going to go into the arms, remove those. At this stage, we have 16 double heat sinks. We have a couple jump jets in our legs. We have a jump jet in our center torso. Okay, some of these uh, heat sinks are probably uh, as part of our engine. All right, uh, so I have put on the endo steel. We have 11 critical slots. That's probably pretty good. Let's see what we can do with this now. So uh, armor, we need to actually allocate. So auto distribute for now. And continually set up some of this stuff. Say we go with 24, 15, 15. 16 in the arms and 20 in the legs. All right, that's not a bad loadout, I guess. And then let's go with the rest of the loadout. So we don't have any weapons or anything like that installed at the moment. We can decide on what we want to have here. So I have one slot in the head, one slot in the center torso. We could just go crazy with energy weapons at this stage. We have pretty good heat efficiency, and I could put in... More double heat sinks if uh, that seems like it makes sense. So let's say we go with the left arm. Okay, so pulse lasers, we have four of those. We do have a couple clan weapons here and there. But maybe we can get away with a, a lot of energy weapons to save ourselves the ammo problems that we're having. We don't have a lot of ammo. So. I'm going to go with a bunch of medium lasers and see what we can do with that. So, one, two, one. Now, again, I don't have the greatest reversal with this mech. So, I think I'm going to go with six medium lasers. So, we'll put uh, one in the left torso, one in the right torso. Then, probably, we should get some semblance of a... Longer range weapon. So, what kind of clan stuff? So we have a 
Flan Large Pulse Laser at 6 tons. Probably going to generate quite a bit of heat. We have the weight to spare. Um, let's say we put that... It's, what, how many slots? Two? Put that in one of the arms, I guess. So I'll put that in the... I'm a little concerned, though, that we may get it shot off. So... Maybe we put it in one of the torso sections. Let's say we put the other medium laser. Uh, we'll put left torso will be the large pulse laser. And then the right torso will be the medium laser. We have two there. So that's six medium lasers and a large pulse laser. Um, we have three criticals still available. So... As far as equipment goes, what would we want? We get an AMS system, which would knock some missiles out of the air. Um, case we don't need. Uh, we don't need that. Um, we do have the potential of double heatsink. Um, let's say we put one in the left torso. I mean, that kind of makes sense thematically. We have that there. Okay, so we have one slot available. And we can put that center torso, right torso, whatever. It doesn't matter. So none of this really strikes me. Um, weapons. We're still way under weight. So maybe improving um, weight or getting more jump jets may make sense. Like we can install it. Oh, no. Blackout can only carry three jump jets. So that doesn't really follow the, the tabletop rule set i should be able to fit more than that but okay let's let's get a bigger engine going there's some more speed now if i try and go over 300 we're going to have a big uptick in weight because you have the weight of a gyro i don't know if i've talked about this yet or not so once i hit this once you'll note that i jump up quite a bit but honestly um I don't see a reason why not to do it, because I really don't have any other equipment that I'd want to install. I don't have enough slots to install another double heatsink. I mean, maybe this is a, a mech that will run hot. Okay, there we go. So we're at 102 kilometers an hour for our speed, and uh, that's pretty good, I'd say. And the weapons are, are not bad. We're all energy weapon. We've got six medium lasers and a... Pulse laser for longer range engagements. So I think for this one, I'm going to go ahead because it will be easier to do it this way. We'll put the uh, pulse laser into group two. So that will be our long range weapon. Now, how long range a pulse laser is, I honestly don't know. Let's look that up real quick to see if that's a viable choice. Now, I will point out that you really can't see all that well beyond 800 meters. So there are weapons that have ranges greater than 800 meters, but really it doesn't make much sense to have that range be as much as it is. All right, so it's 800 meters, so that's pretty much at what you can see. And considering it's a direct a direct fire weapon, an LRM, I see no problem having uh, greater than that range because you really don't have to see your opponent to be able to use it effectively. But with, just with draw distance and everything, 800 meters is pretty much the limit from what I've seen. So, all right, there we go. So that was a pretty extensive uh, setup here. Uh, you know, again, I don't know how viable this mech is. I would prefer not to use the Blackhawk, but from what we had, it was what I felt like I had the best chance of of modifying well. So we'll accept that. Um, I may have to go into the mech lab and save this. So I'll save this as uh, mouse one, because this is the only uh, one under this particular variant. So there we go, mouse one. That's that loadout. All right, well, in any case, I'm going to go ahead and put a cut in the video here. I hope you guys have enjoyed. This is Mouse Gunner, signing out.